So the thumbnail probably has you curious. Uh, this isn't really a Christmas episode. I mean, there's an element of holiday in it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought this would make a funny thumbnail. Santa's bag, maybe? Santa's sack? No, not that. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, happy December. I hope December is treating you guys well so far. It is me, uh, more or less, all things considered. I can't really complain. Uh, and it, since it is December, you know what that means. It is time for the December bargain bag. Yes, the last bargain bag of 2022. <laughs> Had you go in there for a second, didn't I? Anyway, uh, yes, bargain bag will continue for another year. I've still got another 12 of these bad boys sitting in my closet in a uh, grocery bag waiting waiting to be opened over the course of 2023. Yes, bargain bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of one mystery CD grab bag assembled from a big four for a dollar sale that Epic Seconds, a store in downtown Eugene, had going on a while ago. Uh, normally it's their one dollar rack, a dollar per CD, but it was four for a dollar, so had to seize the opportunity to give you guys two more years of bargain bag. Anyway, uh, so yes, before I open this bag, uh, I will be going over... This This month is going to be slightly different with uh, bargain bag. You saw the thumbnail and my cold open with a little Santa hat. Uh, so there is, there is a hint of holiday or Christmas in this episode. What I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I will break down the seven CDs from last month's bargain bag. And as you will recall, there was one holiday CD in last month's bag. And after I do the breakdown of the normal CDs, the regular CDs, I will break down the four, I'm pretty sure it was just four, of the holiday CDs that I uh, unearthed from bargain bags throughout the course of 2022. So this will be my holiday bargain bag CD wrap up uh, after I break down the rest of the stuff. And then after all that stuff's done, I will open the new bag. So set this aside for now. And yes, here we go in rough order from castoffs to keepers. Let's take a look at the regular stuff that was in last month's bargain bag. Here we have a group called Bon Voyage. Uh, they, this is a uh, alt rock basically, but they have a little bit of uh, of electronica elements and a little electronica and a little bit of post grunge sort of. So I suppose I could compare them to Garbage. What little I know of Garbage's discography, kind of like that. Uh, the the uh, lead vocalist is uh, female, so that that's one reason why I liken them to Garbage. But uh, yeah. I don't know if you like that kind of stuff. You might like this group. Um, I didn't find anything particularly keen. I, I wasn't keen on them in any particular way. And this this is going to have a lot of uh, cast-offs this month because I don't know if it's just because I've gotten so overwhelmed with listening to CDs lately. Maybe I'm getting a little bit of burnout in that respect. So it was a lot harder to find anything worth keeping in this month's bag. don't know if it's just, you know, ear fatigue or what. But uh, anyway, as they say, uh, onward and upward, more or less. Uh, Secret Garden, uh, this is their sophomore album, White Stones. And I should have known that this sounded a little bit familiar because when I did that binder haul back at the beginning of 2022, had, you know, what, what was it, close to 200 or 150 CDs in binders. They didn't have their inserts with them. And there were four CDs from Secret Garden in, in there, and this was one of them. So uh, I just, I didn't recognize that this was one of them because the inserts, you know, I didn't have the inserts to go from. So anyway, eh, I did not end up keeping those four Secret Garden CDs. And so, hence, as a result, this one's going bye-bye too. So it's basically new age stuff, uh, mostly with vocals. And I like some new age, but not a whole lot of it. And then we have a classical CD, uh, Piano by Vladimir Horowitz. Uh, an excellent pianist, I must say. Uh, it's just, if there's one subgenre or type of classical music that is probably my least favorite overall, it would be solo piano. So didn't find anything in there really worth keeping. Uh, and then we're getting into the stuff. Uh, this I don't think will be a keeper. I'll listen to this one once more. It might be uh, Mindy Abair. She is a smooth jazz sax saxophonist, and she she's pretty good at what she does. It's just I have enough smooth jazz that sounds pretty much similar to all this 
similar to this stuff. So just not a real compelling reason for me to hang on to this CD in particular. Uh, she is talented. I will give her that. Very, very talented. And also, you don't find a lot of female saxophonists uh, in, you know, with their own record contracts. So that that's kind of makes her stand out from the bunch is the fact that she's a woman. So, and as I said, a very talented woman. I might keep this. I might end up keeping it. I don't know. To be determined. Then we have an artist that I have a few CDs of his so far, and I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. John Tesh, or as it's billed on this CD, The John Tesh Project. Uh, the album is called Discovery, and he is, you know, the, the band leader, I guess you'd say. Uh, he's the main force behind this, but he uses this album as an opportunity to uh, give notice to a bunch of up-and-coming musicians, uh, you know, in, in supporting roles in these songs, which is a pretty cool thing. I can't say that I recognize any of the names, you know, all these years later. This was done in 1996, so, uh, you know, 25... Almost 30, almost 35 years later? 25, I don't know. I can't math today, apparently. But uh, there's a vocalist on here. Her name is Natasha Pierce. And uh, she's she's good to li she's fun to listen to. She's got a great voice. Uh, but there are several cover songs on here. Uh, there's a song called You Break It, which I can't remember. I think this might, it might have been one that John Tesh wrote and was on one of his other CDs. Because... I've heard the song before. It's, I haven't heard this album before, so that song's from somewhere. <laughs> that narrows it down, doesn't it? And then uh, Walking in Memf Memphis, the classic blues, uh, country blues song. Uh, Lady in Red, which was by, I can't remember who it is, who it is that did that song. Uh, Kyrie, the Mr. Mr. classic. And uh, Eleanor Rigby, the Beatles song. So uh, yeah, there's several uh, covers on here. So uh, it's I have to say it's pretty much an entertaining album, so I'm going to go ahead and hang on to it. And then we have an album by country vocalist Patty Loveless. Uh, this is uh, where uh, When Fallen Angels Fly. It, and this I had not heard of, or I had heard of Patty Loveless before, obviously. I had never heard any of her albums before. And uh, I like this one. I tried to think about Elvis. That was, I believe, the lead-off single from this album. And its, it's lyrics have to do with music, so that's one reason why. I was attracted to it, but uh, it's a fun song, and uh, yeah, there are several other uh, good songs on here. Feeling Good About Feeling Bad, that's a pretty good song, and so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one for now at least, and uh, give it another couple of listens, so, uh, and then this one, <clears throat> darn, I meant to look up his credentials before I actually put the camera on, but I, I forgot to, uh, J.T. Taylor, James Taylor is his name, but Obviously, somebody else goes by that name, so he calls himself J.T. Taylor. He is, I believe, the lead vocalist for Cool in the Gang, I believe, is or was uh, the lead vocalist for Cool in the Gang. <laughs> Can you see it? No, sorry. Didn't mean to uh, crowd the image with that. But uh, yeah, a lot of fun stuff on here. This was done in uh, 1989, so it has uh, kind of the beginnings of the New Jack Swing sound to it. But yes, it's uh, contemporary, up-tempo R&B stuff. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's kind of, I would imagine, if you like Cool in the Gang, uh, but if you can imagine their sound being updated from its soul, uh, you know, soul-based 70s work into a bit more of a, a late 80s, early 90s sound, like a new Jack Swing, you will like this. Uh, I can't tell you any of the songs off the top of my head that were, that really stood out. Uh, they were all pretty darn good, and this is, well, this is the, the winner, winner, chicken dinner for this month's... Uh, uh, CD grab bag. So yeah, good stuff. If you like Cool in the Gang, check out J.T. Taylor. Uh, Master of the Game is the name of this album, and it is his debut solo album. So there you go. So let me take a quick uh, refreshment here. And I double-checked my listings, um, my bargain bag videos for the year, and I'm pretty sure that I only unearthed four uh, holiday CDs over the course of this year's bargain bag stuff. So those are the ones I'm going to talk about here. And again, in rough order from Cast Offs to Keepers. Yeah, consider this the first of my holiday lists. You'll see a couple of holiday lists coming up, or holiday videos, I should say. Uh, first one here is uh, White Christmas. Uh, this is the Boston Pops Orchestra conducted by Arthur Fiedler. Um, 
this one was pleasant enough to listen to, but I actually just this earlier this week listened to another Boston Pops holiday CD conducted by Arthur Fiedler's successor John Williams, my man John Williams, at the Baton. So that's the only reason why this one was, you know, I, I didn't strike me as really fantastic is just because I had listened to that other CD. And it's got comparable material, but uh, hey, the Boston Pops is one of the best one of the best pops orchestras that has ever been put to uh, album, obviously. Uh, and Arthur Fiedler was a its conductor for, I believe he was the longest serving conductor in the history of the Boston Pops uh, thus far, at least. And he did a darn good job. Let's just put it that way. Then we have, this one was the one that was in last month's, or, or this month's uh, bag, I think. Um, Mason Williams, uh, A Gift of Song, his holiday album. Lots of fun. Uh, I have, what, three or four other Mason Williams albums. Uh, very, um, just very pleasant, upbeat, refreshing sounding, uh, acoust mostly acoustic uh, instrumental music. Very good stuff. And he does a lot of the staples on here. Joy to the World. What, oh, <laughs> what tune is this? That's a kind of a variation on what child is this? And uh, it's, he's got quite a few uh, original stuff, uh, origin eh, original compositions in here as well, such as Mistletoe Mustache and Guitar Carol, as well as the closing song Santa's Holiday, which is kind of a, a Latin theme or not, not a uh, kind of a tropical or Caribbean themed song, which is kind of uh, cool. I guess it's kind of where Santa goes uh, the other 11 months of the year when he's not actually working. It's kind of the, the idea behind that song. It was, that's a fun one. Then we have uh, The First Noel, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. So, yeah, it's a fun album, I have to say. A nice blend of classic carols or traditional carols, new stuff, and um, in uh, interesting takes on established songs. So, yeah, a nice, nice good mixture in there. And then we have the, the runner-up of this holiday selection for this year. Uh, Michael Bolton, This Is The Time, the Christmas album. And... Uh, not to say, you know, not to disparage Michael Bolton or say that he's predictable, but this is basically what you would expect from a Michael Bolton Christmas album. Uh, excellent singing. Michael Bolton has, he's kind of the butt of a lot of jokes and kind of a cliche in some ways. A lot of people just dismiss him as being cheesy. But when you think about it, the guy can sing. I mean, he sings, he doesn't sing from up here. He sings from down, down there. Well, not, not down there, you know. <laughs> you can't see where I'm pointing, so don't get the wrong idea. But I, I just mean, you know, people. some people sing from, you know, the chest or the lungs. He sings from the diaphragm. He sings from the gut. He sings his ASS off. Uh, and But, of course, obviously the, the ballads here, he can deliver a very um, nuanced ballad as well. So this is, this is a good album, I have to say. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He does the kind of the swinging uh, arrangement of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and uh, also Silent Night, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, Ave Maria, which he does as a duet with Placido Domingo. That's very good. And uh, he does a duet with Winona Judd. Uh, this is the time. And White Christmas, Oh Holy Night, The Christmas Song. It's It's a good album, you know. I've gotten to like, just over the past three or four years, for some reason, I've just really gotten to like holiday albums. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something that comes with age or uh, or what, but anyway. The winner, winner, I guess since we're talking the holiday season, the winner, winner turkey dinner uh, of this uh, round of this year's holiday albums is Navidad by Lara and Reyes. They are a duo of Latin, as, you, as if you couldn't tell by their surnames, uh, Latin acoustic guitarists, and they are fantastic. Uh, and as you can imagine, these songs are done in a Latin style, Latin arrangements. Wonderful stuff, and it's 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 just the two of them with their acoustic guitars. No backup instrumentation, nothing like that, and they make some amazing renditions. Very fun, uh, beautiful when it comes to the ballads, and very lively and refreshing when it comes to the more upbeat songs. If you happen to uh, see the CD anywhere and you're into Christmas music, I encourage you to pick it up. It's just a great, great album. Uh, so yes, this is definitely a keeper. Honestly, pretty much all four of the holiday CDs this year are keepers. 
I think even the Boston Pops one, maybe. That's the only one I might second guess myself on. But yeah, very good stuff. Pardon the ridiculously huge picture of my hand that you see there, as I almost dropped these CDs. But uh, yeah, there we go. Those are the, uh, the last CDs that will be in consideration for my favorite bargain bag finds of the year list, which will be coming up. Don't know if it's going to be in December or it might not be until the beginning of January. I may not do my year-end spectacularish until the beginning of January. We'll have to see because I've got several things planned for for December. I don't know if I'm going to have the time or energy to do them all. So, yeah. Anyway, so that is it for the uh, the breakdown of the old stuff. And now let's check. Let's check a look. <laughs> Word salad. Let's take a look at these. New CDs for the Sparkle Bag. And yes, these will be the first ones that will be evaluated at uh, in my January Bargain Bag video. So, and thus they will be eligible for the uh, 2023 Bargain Bags uh, Finds of the Year. And as you can see, there is no Peekaboo CDs uh, I like their word the year, last year just because of the way they fit in the bag. So. Anyway, the first one we have here is Instrumental Magic. How about that? Mystic Music presents Instrumental Magic. Ooh, cheesy stuff. Uh, yes, instrumental renditions of... Or are they actually the, the original versions? They might be the original versions. I don't know. Yes, we've got... Uh, Chariots of Fire by Vangelis, Axel F by Harold Faltermeyer, Hawaii Five O by The Ventures. So, I guess it will. It remains to be seen whether these are the original versions or uh, studio sound alike versions. Then we have we have Kathy Matea, Lonesome Standard Time. I believe she is country, if I'm not mistaken. So. That'll be interesting to listen to. And then we have... Oh, no matter which way I put these, I'm going to show them uh, incorrectly. Oh, this one. I saw it on the shelf and I was very intrigued. Mark Knopfler and Chet Atkins. Two guitar legends. Uh, and the name of the album is Neck and Neck. Yay, guitar puns. So, uh, yeah, this will be fun to listen to. Uh, I've always I've always kind of liked Mark Knopfler, uh, even though I've never really gone after his music. Um, so yeah, that this will be fun to listen to. Now I'll be a little bit surprised if this one does not take the uh, you know take the winner of uh, of its month. And we have oh, Coverdale Page, their debut album, and I should know who. Coverdale and Page are I, Jimmy Page from uh, Led Zeppelin. Is Led Zeppelin? I think. Yeah. For, forgive me if I got that wrong. My brain is uh, not what it's not its normal self today. But uh, yeah, I have I have never listened to this album, even though it was I think it was fairly successful back in its day. So. Then we have oh Al Hurt, uh, his all time greatest hits. I believe he is a jazz trumpeter, so I'm always open to listening to some jazz, so that could be interesting. We have just a couple ones, a couple, a couple ones left, a couple CDs left. What do we have here? Oh, Maxwell, and the album is called Embria, and he's, I believe, he's an R&B artist. So, uh, yeah, I'm always up for listening to some R&B. I'm always up for listening to almost anything, let's face it. Then we have the next to the last CD in the box is. Oh, Reba! And this is. It's Your Call. Uh, one of her, obviously, one of her earlier albums. So, yeah, this will be. She's got a duet, with, a duet with Vince Gill on this one. So, yeah. I've always liked Reba. And again, kind of like Mark Knopfler. I've always liked Reba. I've just never really gone after her music. Well, of course, you saw in my uh, um, 
whole darn CD collection video this week that I've got, what, three, three or four of her albums? Oh, there you go. And then the final one this month is... Oh, cool. I was hoping I'd get this one. I forgot that I'd put it in one of the bargain bags. Uh, Eric Tingstad and Nancy Rumble. They are an acoustic duo that I first uh, happened upon back in the early, no, late 80s when I was in my new age phase. I really enjoyed their stuff, the stuff that I had heard of them. And I just recently picked up their, I think it's their fourth album. I've had their first and second albums for a long time, and this is their third album. So I was kind of hoping that I would eventually happen upon this. I, I I forgot that I had actually put it inside of a bargain bag. So, yay, there we go. This one's definitely going to be a keeper. I just have to listen to it. So, just like that, the last bargain bag video of the year is done. You will be, of course, uh, ah, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, as I said, you will be hearing my breakdown of these CDs uh, in January. So, Yes, I guess that is it for now. Excuse me as I jiggle the camera again. But yes, that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of December 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and be sure to browse my past videos and ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.